Hello everyone, I am Dominika from Crossref and in this video I will talk about the mental data matching. In particular, what it is, why we need it and what we do at Crossref about it. I will also answer some common questions about metadata matching. So what is metadata matching? This image shows some example items commonly appearing in the scholarly record. We have proper items with identifiers, such as a journal article with a DOI, an organization with an RID, a person with an ORCID. We also have mentions of items, such as an affiliation, a citation, an author name. Such mentions usually appear in scientific articles. They essentially refer to other items by providing some information about them, and that information may or may not include identifiers. The goal of metadata matching is to figure out which items these mentions refer to, which is equivalent to linking the mentions with items, as shown on the slide. Different mentions will be of course matched to different types of items. So for example, a citation is usually matched to a scientific paper, an affiliation to an organization, and author name to a person. Note that when we insert a link between a citation and a cited paper, we also implicitly insert a relationship between a citing paper and a cited paper, because we know which paper contains the citation. The same happens for other types of matching as well. But why do we need matching in the first place? At Crossref, every day we deal with tens of thousands of metadata records deposited by publishers. In this data, we see that 70% of all bibliographic citations do not contain the identifier of the cited item. The situation is better, but far from perfect. For funder information, 38% of funder mentions do not contain the funder identifier. This leaves us with huge numbers of citations and funder mentions unlinked, meaning that we cannot follow or analyze those relationships. If we want to fill this gap, we need metadata matching, and because of the scale of the data, matching of those mentions has to be automatic. And this is exactly what we do at Crossref. As a result of the matching we perform, in addition to the 30% of cited DOIs provided by publishers, we have DOIs for a further 41% of the citations. Similarly, the matching inserts funder DOIs for 9% of the funder mentions. But this is only the beginning. Earlier this year, we did an analysis around matching of funding information to registered grants. You can read all about it on our blog, and we will continue this research. We also plan to address preprint matching and affiliation matching. And finally, we are thinking of building a matching API, which will allow the users to run different matching approaches on different kinds of inputs, evaluate and compare them. Now, I'd like to address some common questions about metadata matching, but be warned, the answers will not be too optimistic. First, you might be thinking that as time goes by and we become more and more informed about all the issues in scholarly communication, we should need less and less matching. In reality, the opposite is true. First of all, when we look, for example, at the citation matching, we see that the fraction of citations deposited with DOIs does not increase over time. This means that publishers are not getting better in collecting the cited DOIs from the authors. Secondly, whenever a new identifier emerges, all of a sudden we need another type of matching, such as, for example, grant matching. Also note that we typically first collect a lot of mentions of items without identifiers, such as funding information, and only then we start assigning identifiers to mentioned items. This means that when a new identifier appears, we typically already have tons of messy mentions that have to be matched. You might also think that it is enough to just do a simple title lookup to match a citation, but the reality is much more complicated. First of all, we don't always know the exact title of a citation. The title may be buried inside the formatted citation. Secondly, quite often the title in the citation and the title in the cited article differ. There might be differences related to how this information was extracted or submitted. There might be typos or errors. And finally, the same title might be shared among several articles, either just by chance or because we have different versions of the same article. In general, simple and naive approaches sound promising, but when you look more closely at the messy and complex data, they are just not good enough. So let's say the matcher inserts a link between a citation and a cited article. Can we be sure it is correct? Unfortunately, no. The matcher typically decides whether it is confident enough about a potential link. If we require the matcher to be very, very confident, we will only match cases where the metadata is almost identical, and we will miss a lot of links because of small discrepancies. Conversely, if we do not require much confidence, we will get a lot of incorrect links. Typically, the cutoff point is somewhere in between and is decided based on data. 
Note that even if the fraction of incorrect links is very small, on a large scale there still will be a few such cases. Of course, those are not just random incorrect links. Usually the matter matched the citation to the wrong version of the article, to a book instead of a chapter, or something similar. To sum up, the metadata matching is not perfect, but is still very much needed. Thank you for listening, and if you have any questions or comments, do not hesitate to get in touch.